I have a small challenge for you. Can you answer this GCSE physics question? If you'd like to have a go at the question yourself, you can head over to my website. You can download a copy, which includes not only the question itself that you can print out and write on, but also the mark scheme, and also this set of work solutions, which might be useful when it comes to looking at how your answer compares to the way that I would answer it as a physics teacher. Now, of course, I would absolutely love to find out how you got on. What is your mark out of 10? And are you a GCSE student? Are you an A-level student just having a go at a bit of easy revision to kind of warm yourself up before your real exams this year? Or maybe you're doing exams in some other part of the world and how do your exams compare to these GCSE questions that we take in England? So once you've had a go at your question, you can then have a look at the rest of this video where I explain a little bit more about why I wrote this question in this format. So this question is what we call a synoptic question. And that means it involves many different areas of the physics course and many different skills you will have developed. So initially, it just looks like a question about electricity. We have an electrical circuit. Uh, if anybody is doing A-level, you'll realise that this is actually what we call a potential divider circuit. And we have two different resistors that divide the electrical potential of this power supply. We then have a fan that's got two blades, and that's important, and that's why I've highlighted it in the question. And then we have a light source which is shining past the fan blade. So we have an electrical circuit. We then, of course, involve the skills about actually interpreting the information on the graph. So we can see that the output potential difference across that voltmeter changes with time. So sometimes it's low, and then sometimes it's high. Now the first question is an explanation. So this is where we've got to think about your physics knowledge. Why does a graph show two distinct values of potential difference? Well, this graph is related to that potential difference which is measured by this voltmeter, which is measuring the potential difference across this component. So this component is a light dependent resistor. Its resistance depends on uh, the light intensity that it's actually receiving. And that's gonna depend upon if that fan blade is blocking out the light or if it's letting the light through. So a way that you could answer this is that you could say that, uh, first of all, what's actually happening in this diagram? So this is a static image, but we know in reality, something is going to be moving. So what you could say is that as the fan blade rotates, it blocks the light for a short time. So basically stating the obvious. Don't forget that even though you might be working at a really high level, you get so many easy marks for stating the obvious in questions. Now, of course, uh, when less light falls on the LDR, then its resistance increases. Again, stating the obvious. Now, you might remember that there's a graph uh, where if we were to look at the resistance and we looked at the light intensity, we'd see a shape that looks a bit like this. Effectively, as you shine more light on it, the resistance of that electrical component decreases. So when there's more light, we're going to have a lower resistance. And this increases the potential difference across it. And that's because in this circuit here, the potential difference across that component is directly proportional to the resistance of that component. When it's got a higher resistance, it's going to have a greater PD. So um, that's the reason that we have this changing value on the graph. Okay, now I know that lots of people, you really don't like these explanations. When it's like a wordy answer, it's the kind of thing that people shy away from. If you're like me, then I like the maths, I like the numbers, I know there's a definite answer, but these questions, which are worth two or three marks throughout the paper, they're the ones that it's really worth putting the time into. Okay, uh, the next question then, when the output voltage is at a maximum, and sometimes we use the word voltage, sometimes we use the word potential difference, they mean exactly the same thing. We've got a charge of uh, 4.0 times 10 to the minus six, so you need to be aware of how to use standard form in your calculator. Uh, this flows during a 5.0 millisecond period. Now, a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. And we want to calculate the resistance of the LDR at this maximum output. So this is a five mark question. And I reckon this is harder than 99% of questions in real GCSE papers. It's a multi-step question. There are lots of marks available, but you've just got to follow the same steps every time you get to a question like this. Now, my first step will be to look at the question and try and identify some of the numbers. So we've got a charge, uh, which is written down up here. I'm just gonna underline that. Uh, charge has got the symbol Q. 
we've got a time of five milliseconds, so that's T, and we want to work out the resistance R uh, at a maximum output V. Okay, so what I've started to do is just underline key bits of data. I've put down the symbol uh, to represent that quantity. So um, if we want to work out the resistance, um, this is gonna be related to V. Okay, so how is V related to R? Well, I guess I could look in my formula sheet, but actually I've done my work, I've done my revision, I know which equations come up, and we know that V is equal to I, R. Okay, now we want to find R, so we can say that R is equal to V over I. Um, do we know the maximum potential difference? Well, actually, yes, because it's given to us in the question. We've got a graph here where we've got time and we've got output potential difference. And we can see that this maximum value is between four and six, so it must be five. So we know that V is equal to 5.0 volts. Okay, that's the number we do know. We don't know R and we don't know I, but we could probably probably find it out because we've got the value of Q and T. And again, uh, just you know, really being fami familiar with all of my equations, uh, we know that Q is equal to I T. If you're not sure, that's time to double check your formula sheet. Uh, so I is gonna be equal to Q over T. Do we know the charge transferred? Well, yes, it's given to us in the question. It's 4.0 times 10 to the minus six coulombs. Do we know the time? Uh, yes, we do, because it's actually 5.0 times 10 to the minus three. So 10 to the minus three means we have milliseconds. Uh, we could also say this is the same as 4 times 10 to the minus 3 over 5. And actually, uh, when you put this into your calculator, and I would urge you not to do sums in your head, put it into your calculator, you know, press those buttons, see what number comes up. This gives a value of 8.0 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, obviously, those who've been doing many past papers will see the obvious mistake. I've written outside of the box. And that means that anything outside of this box might not be scanned in. So I'm just going to write my number again. So the current is equal to 8.0 uh, times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Okay, so we know the current, we know the potential difference from the graph, and therefore we can work out R. So this is going to be equal to V over I, which is 5, divided by 8.0 times 10 to the minus 4. Now I suspect I probably could work that out uh, if I had enough time. But again, I'd be using my calculator to then say that R is equal to a small number divided by a really, really small number, which is gonna give us a big number, which is equal to 6250. Now that is not the answer, because what we have here is a question where we've been given raw data to two significant figures, so 4.0, 5.0, and therefore I could only really justifiably give my answer to two significant figures as well. So this kind of rounds up to about uh, 6,300 ohms, but really to two significant figures in its purest form, if anybody's doing uh, you know, quite high level thinking about the physics, this would be equal to 6.3 times 10 to the three ohms. But of course, if you give it as 6,300, that's appropriate. And even at GCSE, if you gave it like that, that would get you all of the marks. So that question, multi-step calculation, but if you can do that, then I suspect you're gonna get a grade nine this summer. Okay, uh, the last bit then, using figure 13, so often it talks about a figure, which is like a diagram or a graph uh, in exam papers. We're gonna determine the number of rotations per second. So we've got a graph here, and we can see there's a low point and a high point, and that's gonna be due to this fan rotating. But the key thing here, and this is where everything in an exam paper in bold is important, is it has two blades. Which means in one rotation, that blade is going to rotate and cut out that light two times. So the time for one oscillation is going to be between this point and this point over here. So it's cut out the light two times. So we know from looking at this figure here, and interpreting that diagram there, that the time for one rotation, which is what we call the time period, capital T, this is equal to 40 milliseconds, which is 40 times 10 to the minus three seconds. 
So how many times does that rotate per second? Well, this is then this kind of synoptic question. It kind of links to the work you might have done on the waves, where we can say that frequency is equal to one over the time period. So the frequency, the number of times something happens per second, is equal to one over 40 times 10 to the minus three. And again, when you put this into your calculator, this gives an answer equal to 25 hertz. So in one second, that fan blade rotates 25 times, which is kind of what you'd expect for a fan moving really quickly. So um, when it comes to actually doing past papers, I would say you always need to think, if you're not sure if you've got the correct answer, then mark it incorrect. Don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. So looking at this, uh, we've got the blade rotating. Uh, it blocks the light, so that's describing what's happening. When less light falls, its resistance increases, and that increases the PD across it, so I've got three marks there. What I tend to do when I'm marking is to kind of put ticks by the work, put the number of marks in a circle, and that just makes it a lot easier to count up afterwards. We then have um, lots of stuff here. Again, you can use the, the, the mark scheme here to kind of look at where the marks are gained. So we've basically rearranged that equation. We've rearranged that equation. Uh, we've got some numbers here. We've got a number there. And then we've got our final answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So that's our five marks for that. And again, we have an equation that's been rearranged, the numbers put in to give our answer as 25. So again, two marks there. So three plus five plus two is 10. So I got full marks, but that's because I'm an expert at physics and I wrote the question. How did you get on? It would be lovely to find out in the comments beneath this. Now, I think in terms of GCSE questions, that is based on the knowledge that everybody doing GCSE physics has. The difficulty is actually applying it, especially when you get a multi-step calculation. Now, if you're doing A-level physics, then you should be aiming for 10, and you should realize that questions like that come up all the time. Now, if you're doing GCSE, I suspect that question is harder than anything in your real exam. But of course, if you'd like to really prepare for your GCSE exams, you want to get those high grade nines that I know that a lot of you are aiming for, then I do have practice papers which are available in my shop. Anyway, uh, it'd be great to find out how you got on. And of course, if you haven't already done so, do subscribe. I have new videos every single week and I wish you the best of luck in your exams this summer.